All right, this is our um, lesson on properties of parallelograms. And if you can see here, we have I have drawn a parallelogram. And what I want to do is first just label each of the vertices. And we're going to label them in uh, letter order. And so ABCD is the name of this parallelogram. So this is parallelogram. A, B, C, D, or we might call it parallelogram. We draw the little parallelogram, A, B, C, D. Okay, so that's how we name it. When we're talking about a parallelogram, this is the necessary characteristics. Opposite sides have to be parallel. And so it's going to be marked something like this. Okay, so A, B, the segment is going to be parallel to CD, the segment, and BC is going to be parallel to AD, the segment. This is the necessity for a parallelogram. Okay? Parallelogram. Two pairs of parallel sides. Okay? Must be a quadrilateral. Okay, so it must be a quadrilateral with two pairs of parallel sides. Theorem 6.2.1. If a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, then its opposite sides are congruent. This is something that, can put, that you can put in your cards to use on your test. If a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, then its opposite sides are congruent. So if I have this parallelogram here that's labeled A, B, C, D, And I know that it's a parallelogram because opposite sides are going to be parallel. Then the conclusion that I can draw here, this should be underlined, is that AB is congruent to DC and that BC is congruent to AD. Okay, so that's one of our theorems. We know that that makes sense because what we have is parallel lines. Well, they're equidistant apart from one another, so it makes sense that opposite sides would be congruent. Let's prove theorem 6.2.1 or 6-2-1. JKLM is a parallelogram, so I'm going to mark it. And when I mark it, I'm going to notice a couple things. We've drawn this diagonal, and we want to prove that the opposite sides are congruent. Well, let's take a second here to kind of see what we're talking about. My first thing, JKLM is a parallelogram. That's given, okay? So that's information that we know, given, okay? And in the second step, we're going to use what that means to talk about the different pieces. Okay, so if you've downloaded this, you should you've downloaded this document, you should have this in there. And so you've already got this diagram drawn. And so let's figure out what this means. From there, where can we go? Well, the pieces of a parallelogram give us certain things. I already marked it. So we could say KJ is parallel to LM. And we could also say that KL is parallel to so KL is parallel to JM, okay? And that's two, that's the definition of parallelogram. How did I know to use that step next? I just kind of, I'm using the definition of different things that I know, and I'm going logically where, where I kind of want to go because I don't know anything else. But I know that I'm going to try to prove that opposite sides are congruent. So I, I'm, I'm going there. Also, in the diagram, they've marked these angles. Well, it makes sense that I'm probably going to use something about these angles. And having parallel lines talked about helps me you know, talk about these angles because now I can say something about them. Well, I can also say that angle 1 is congruent to angle 2 and angle 3 is congruent to angle 4. 
because they are alternate interior angles. Okay? This is a benefit to us because now that these are alternate interior angles, I've got some things that develop. In order to start to talk about the lengths of the sides, I think because I have two triangles here, I'm going to be using CPCTC, remember? So if I can say something about these two triangles, and I'm thinking about this, if I could prove that these two triangles were congruent, I could say something about KL and JM. And I could say something about KJ and LM. And so when I use these alternate interior angles, look at what I've got. Side between two angles. So what I'm going to go to is I'm going to say JL is congruent to JL. And that's the reflexive property. of congruence. And this is good because now I have a side, an angle and a side in one, congruent to a side, an angle and a side in another. Sorry, angle side and angle and angle side angle. Well if I could show that these two triangles were congruent then wouldn't the corresponding pieces be congruent? CPCTC? You see what I'm saying? Okay and so my my fifth step is going to be saying that triangle J K L is congruent to triangle L M J okay because I've got an angle a side and an angle congruent to an angle a side and an angle so I'm going to say ASA for this one and so in my sixth step I am able to say that JK is congruent to LM and I'm also able to say that KL is congruent to JM because they're corresponding pieces of CPCTC. So I use my definitions and the fact that these two triangles were put together to say that the two triangles were congruent, which meant because it's a parallelogram, because the sides are congruent now because of ASA, then, the si then I can use CPCTC to say that, that stuff. Okay? That's just a little proof. Here's three more theorems for your cards. And I'm going to mark up some things and draw my conclusions. What I have is here three theorems that deal with the attributes of, of parallelograms. Okay, the first one says if a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, then its opposite angles are congruent. Okay? So I've marked it as a parallelogram. And what I'm going to do is this it's a theorem that says, now that opposite angles are congruent. So I'll just go ahead and mark them. And the conclusion that I can make is that angle A is congruent to angle C and angle B is congruent to angle D. Okay, once again, feel free to pause this however you need to to get this down, but if you've downloaded it, you should be right with me. Okay, so if you've downloaded this and printed this out, we're, we're following right along. The second one is also a parallelogram. And I've marked opposite sides parallel. And it says the consecutive angles would be supplementary. So what I can say is this. The measure of angle A plus the measure of angle B is equal to 180. Because we remember that supplementary means 180. And I could also say that the measure of angle B plus the measure of angle C is equal to 180. Because they are consecutive consecutive meaning next to. Or I could say the measure of angle C plus the measure of angle D is equal to 180. Or the measure of angle D plus the measure of angle A is 180. Okay? This is good. This is actually going to allow us to do a lot of different things with, with problems in this area. Think about it. These are same side interior angles between these two parallel lines. So this is good for us. If a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, then its diagonals bisect one another. So this means that the conclusion that I can draw is what I just put on there. Okay? There's a lot of marks that go into these parallelograms now, but if you keep it straight, what the theorem is talking about, we can, we can draw some great conclusions. So this is going to mean that BZ 
is congruent to ZD. It's also going to mean that AZ is congruent to ZC. Okay, This is going to be good for us in, as far as finding lengths and finding distances. Okay, Let's keep moving on. So we're going to use the properties of parallelograms to find these measures. ABCD is a parallelogram. So what that means is this. These are parallel. These are parallel. And I remember from my theorems, and I can go back to my cards, that these angles have certain relationships. So what I'm going to do is, I know I have angles here and here. Okay? And what I'm relating this to is this angle theorem here. Consecutive angles, because they're next to one another. Check it out. They're next to one another right here. I'm trying to point at the screen. These two right here are consecutive. They're next to one another. So I'm going to use the one that talks about consecutive angles. Well, consecutive angles are equal to 180. So what I am going to do is I'm going to say 6y plus 5 plus 10y minus 1 is equal to 180. Well, when I substitute everything and I get everything put together, combine like terms, I've got 16y plus 4 is equal to 180. Okay. And so what I'm going to do is I am going to um, substitute or subtract, sorry, it's minus 4, lost my train of thought there. 16y is equal to 176. I divide by 16 on both sides. This is just algebra, guys. And I get y is equal to 11. Okay? And so what I can do is the measure of angle B is equal to 6 times 11 plus 5. 66 plus 5 is equal to 71 degrees. Okay? The measure of angle A is equal to 10 times 11 minus 1 not minus 11, minus 1 is 110, minus 1 is equal to 109. That makes sense because these two together equal 180. Okay, Let's find these sides. I've boxed in the two sides and I've got a theorem that talks about the sides. Opposite sides are congruent. Remember up here? Opposite sides are congruent. Okay, so I'm going back through my cards here. Opposite sides are congruent. So I'm going to take these two side measures that I have. 5x plus 19 is equal to 7x. I subtract 5x from both sides. I've got 19 is equal to 2x. Divide by 2 on both sides. I get 9.5 is equal to x. Plug it back in, 7 times 9.5 is equal to x. So that means that both of my sides are going to be 66.5. And is also equal to b, c. Okay? So we're using the basic properties, like we've talked about. Use the definitions, use the theorems to solve these problems. Let's try to solve this one. See if you can do this one on your own. I'll give you a hint. It's the one theorem that we haven't used yet. I'm going to keep rolling through and solve it, but if you want to pause and try to solve it on your own, you go right ahead. Okay? So, notice, this is a parallelogram. Okay? So that means, if I have these diagonals, they bisect one another. So, when I take 4z minus 9, that's going to be equal to 2z. Okay? This side is congruent to this side. This side with the double ring around it is equal to this side with the double ring around it. Okay? So I subtract 4z. Minus 9 is equal to minus 2z. Divide by that minus 2 there. 4.5 is equal to z. Okay? Now, let's do the other one. 3w is equal to w plus 8. Subtract w. w equals 4. Now, if I was going to try to find ac, ac is going to be equal to 3 times w, so this half is 12. 
This half is 12, so AC is 24. And if I was going to find BD, that would be equal to 4Z minus 9 and 2Z. I would end up getting that that is equal to 18. Okay? Let's look at one coordinate plane problem. Okay? And that's it. This is the last problem. Parallelograms in the coordinate plane. The vertices of parallelogram ABCD are A, B, and D. Find the coordinates of point C. I'm going to show you an easy way to do this. Okay, let's look at this for a second. If A is at 1, 1, negative 2, and B is at negative 2, 3, and D is at 5, negative 1. Let's take a look at this for a second. I connect these three dots. Watch how I do this. We could use distance formula, um, slope formula, but watch what, I, watch what I'm going to do here. I know that because sides are parallel, they have the same slope. Right? But instead of calculating slope, watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to count this. I'm going to go up to B. So I know I'd have to go up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And over 1, 2, 3, 4. Sorry, it's 3. You're right. I miscounted. So it's up 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and over 1, 2, 3. See if I can connect the dots here. Okay, okay, so all I did was I just counted the slope. So count out the slope. Okay, and by counting out the slope, we've known, we know that we go up 5 over 3 to get from A to B. Well, to get from D to C, we'd have to go up 5 over 3. Okay, guys, thanks for watching. That's parallelograms, the first part. I've got a couple proofs that I'm going to put on a video for you guys, but we're going to go through them in class. We can review them on the video later. All right, so that's it. Thanks for watching.